Wowee. Howdy folks, it's uh, it's Tuesday. Uh, Monday I had a little family emergency, so I was tied up all day. Couldn't get anything uh, knocked out as far as uh, videos go. So today we're gonna talk about some things. Uh, I wanna talk about automotive emergency. Also wanna cover this thing here, yard sale. Hmm, yeah, pretty good item. And also I got a brand new product in, and it's a time-lapse system for uh, monitoring stuff like a 3d printer that kind of thing so this ought to be very interesting too but I don't know anything about it so you and I'll have to find out so how about we hang out in the garage today and see what we can get into <laughs> Yeah, and before we start any of this stuff uh, don't forget we're giving away the enjoy wood the big laser engraver and for wood cutting wood uh giving that away at the end of the month so if you want to get in on that you need to check the last episode or just email us at ctrewards at gmx.com and in the subject line laser and just you know your name and your address that's all we're asking for for entries just email it to that like i said uh, one per household of course and uh end of the month <laughs> That's a nice one, yes. And we're going to put it in a big box so you don't have to assemble it when it gets there. Now, let's let's get into this. Uh, I have carried this kit for, seems like, uh, generations. But I've had one since I was a young guy. And I have bought a better and better kit over the years. I've had this kit probably a good 10, 15 years with me. And if you ever get a flat tire on a car, you got this is this is the beginning of fixing the flat now if it's a sidewall puncture you're out of luck you know you got to change the tire or whatever but generally i find it's usually a screw a nail something that a contractor dropped out in the highway somewhere and i found it you know bang right through the tire and it's really quick because a lot of times with a pair of pliers or something you can pull the screw the nail sometimes you can just take it out with your hand it's really bad and you can just put a plug in it and a plug kit like this this one here uh, is about $19 I think at Amazon but this is a uh, heavy duty kit sort of it's got the red plug so it's a little bit better plug and it doesn't take much to plug a tire but you know man it could save you a lot of hassle and uh, because we're an Amazon associate, we will provide a link in the description below for where you can, you know, find this kit. You can also buy better kits. I carry this one and also a pair of pliers and screwdrivers, some basic tools. I've always done that for years, and it has gotten me out of trouble several times because I was looking at the tire kit here this morning, and I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, I have used four plugs out of this kit, and there, there's a lot. There's a lot more in there yet. But that's four times that it, uh, you know, got me out of trouble kind of thing. But there's one other thing. When you plug a tire, you also need a little, you know, one of these little cheap 12-volt compressors that, you know, plugs into a cigarette lighter or something. And you can, you know, put some air in the tire, maybe enough to at least get down the road. Uh, this one here showed up, and it works great. It's uh, not expensive by any means, but I was able to find this at a yard sale for $5. And, you know, look how small it is. It's compact. It fits down in the secret compartment trunk of the car with the rest of this. But instead of changing a tire, generally I can fix my flat and then just go merrily on my way. But the compressor is part of that deal. You, you know, plug in a tire, yeah, but air, that's, you know, that can be another problem. And I have solved that problem over the years. Again, I'll provide a link in the description below for, you know, one of these units. Uh, that was something that uh, just came up over the weekend and it wasn't because I had a flat or something. It was just something I thought about that, you know, uh, a lot of people, I see them on the side of the road with a flat tire and they're like, yeah, it's just a nail in the tire here, but I have no way to fix it. And it's like, just carry a couple of small things like that. They don't cost that much. And you know, you can be back on the road and, and you don't have to jack the car up and try to figure out how to get the tire off, which can sometimes with these new cars can be, can be very techy. Anyways, uh, that's two things, three. Okay, now we gotta talk about this. This was sent in and I gotta thank the gal for sending this over to me. This was is fascinating because if you're ever running a 3D printer and let's get a 3D printer out right here and we'll see if we can set this up and see what it's gonna do for us, huh? Yeah, we back? I think we're back, yeah, we're back. <laughs> 
while all this was going on, I, I heard on the news, or I heard on the internet, it looked like David Hasselhoff had passed away. No, he, he's not dead. He's alive. He's fine. You know, like, uh, but he's being victimized by the internet for whatever reason. Uh, I did a little bit of work with uh, David Hasselhoff back in the 80s. Uh, I did promotional photography work with Toys R Us, which was owned at that time by a fellow by the name of Charles Lazarus. And uh, I got to work with David a little bit. Several different, quite a few different shows. Uh, can't even remember how many now, but uh, there was there was some fun times. And he was a great person to work with. I Actually, he was one of the best actors, actresses to deal with for photography. He was easygoing. You know, I didn't have any trouble with that man at all. And uh, I just keep thinking to this day, if he ever turned on the, uh, was it Coffee and Tools show and looked at me, he'd probably say, you know, that guy's familiar. Where do I, where do I know him from? Well, he was behind a Nikon FE with uh, 36 uh, exposure rolls of film, you know, in all my pockets with flashes. Uh, man, that was, that's some technology that would just be laughable by today's digital standards. And this camera we have today right now is going to take us to another level because supposedly, somehow, this camera, you can look in on it with your phone and you could be away from the house or something and you can check your 3D printer and see what's going on and if something's going sideways, which can happen, well, that's unfortunate, but things can go bad, uh, with a print, you can theoretically shut the printer down from the phone and just say, okay, stop the print, I'll fix it when I get home. Wow, huh? Yeah, and it has time lapse, so you can have a full uh, filming of something in time lapse sequence being built on a 3D printer. If you're not familiar with 3D printers, they're very slow as far as you know making something goes. Uh, even something as simple as the little uh, "Where's my benchy? Where's my benchy?" Find a benchy. Yeah, 3D printers are really cool, but something like this little boat, which is a, a, called the Benchy because it's a, kind of a benchmark to check the 3D printer, make sure it's working great. There's a beautiful print right here. Something like this uh, can take a couple of hours to make on the average 3D printer, depending on your settings. You can speed things up or slow things down, depending on how you know beautiful and accurate, I guess, you want something to be. So, a lot of times a camera would be really handy. I have tried GoPro and some other cameras with these things and they have never worked out. In fact, it's been a disaster at times. The camera has even destroyed the print by mistake of getting caught up in things while the bed is moving back and forth. Uh, the gal that supplied this, to the, sent this over to us, said this is for monitoring your 3D printer and also controlling it. Uh, what? Okay, let's check all this out. I, Wow, yeah, cool stuff. High tech. I took the camera out of the box and there isn't much in the box. There's a couple of cables, uh, a little uh, <laughs> USB, I guess. Yeah, USB, but it's this is a power supply for the camera. This camera may look pretty simple, plastic little stupid camera, but it is powerful. It's like a Raspberry Pi for a 3D printer. This is for a 3D printer. So it's specifically designed to work with a 3D printer. So it was like, wow, okay, really, you know, how big a deal, right? Well, the, the phone can tie into this, and from the phone, you can control and run your 3D printer. Also, you can be away from the house and monitor your 3D printer, all using this little guy right here. And it's a lot cheaper than a Raspberry Pi. Also, it can do time-lapse photography. Now, that is so cool, you know, and uh, it's only $69.99 right now from what I just checked, recent price. So you have a really simple hookup and they say keep the box right for this right here so you can put the box beside the printer and you put the camera on the box and you're you know you basically have a shot right there if, you, if that's what you want but the instructions are fairly unsophisticated but it's it's from this here we are right here it's from I think that's Minton or Minchin Minchin uh, but this is the Beagle camera of course it looks like a Beagle and it's fairly simple to set up as far as, you know, they try to make as un, you know, plug and play as possible, but it will hook to your Wi-Fi in your house, and of course you put a, an app that you downloaded to your phone. The uh, couple of problems here that I ran into was, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll hook up to Android and or iPhones, that kind of thing. Yeah, there was some uh, questions there. Also, it has Google. It'll also hook through a Google uh, Drive app. 
and also or Google Play, excuse me, Google Play download the or from the App Store the iPhone. And there's also an APK download, which uh, I'm not, i just not even familiar with whatever that is all about. And then, of course, you have uh, the Beagle print uh, for your little icon there. So, and it's really simple. It's just two cable, power cable to the outlet to the camera, and then the camera is plugged through a US, uh, USB, but it's through the printer cable. Now, that's where we ran into trouble. I wanted to do this today, and I was going to do it on the uh, tarantula printer. This is the artillery. This is the Hornet. And the Hornet's a really nice machine. Sweet machine. It's only a couple of hundred dollars, and it's a it's pretty, pretty nice little machine for the very low price, really. Here's the problem. Tarantula doesn't have a printer port cable uh, such as uh, what they sent me right here. This little computer cable uh, with the printer port plug on it. The tarantula doesn't have that, so this cannot hook to a tarantula for the time being. I, there's just, yeah, can't be done at this point. The Hornet, on the other hand, has the printer cable, so you can plug from the from this printer into the camera and then into power and power everything up, of course. Uh, put the app in your phone and get your phone to connect to the camera. Now you can set this for time lapse, which but the time lapse can be done different ways. You can punch that in, which is again very cool, you know, because you can have in the camera in uh, printer terms, you can layer, put say five or ten layers down or something, and then have your extruder go over here and park for a second, take a picture, and then go back to work. Now the bad thing is, of course, building this in a couple of hours. All of a sudden, if you're doing that, this will now take a lot longer. You know, it'll take a long time. I don't even, I'm not even going to guesstimate what that would take, but let's just say if this takes two hours, I'm thinking it'll probably take maybe more than four, five, six hours because you're sending this over every five or six layers or whatever, take a picture. Now the cool thing is when you get the results as a video, you'll have this, you know, boat sort of thing, just sit there on the printer plate and just come up right in front of you. You know, it'll look like magic kind of thing. It's cool. You know, it's, it's very, very cool. Uh, there's a lot of uh, videos, you know, on the uh, internet with, uh, you know, people using these. And there's also a lot of videos uh, talking about using these and showing results and stuff. So I thought, well, what's the point of me, you know, showing you the same thing everybody else has been doing? So I wanted to get more into different things about it, like the 1080p camera, some people say it's not that great. It requires a lot of light. That's something that a lot of folks didn't understand or didn't seem to understand is you need good lighting. If you have good lighting, you'll have good color and you'll have good, you know, resolution. If you don't have good lighting, it's not going to work all that great for you. And also, there's a this camera also is uh has infrared or IR for like nighttime use where there's no lights and it will go to black and white of course and it will develop a time lapse uh video of your project. So cool, you know. But uh, there was some criticism over the uh, 1080p was like was like eh not that great but yeah it's not 4k maybe you know maybe that's coming uh, the other problem that uh, I just uh, sort of touched on and mentioned was you need to be able to use a printer port cable that can plug into a 3D printer and most can but like the tarantula back there doesn't have it so there's no way to they use this with the tarantula you just can't be done, at least not this time. And I don't know how they would get around that, but I can invent a few different ways, but you know, they don't have it. Also, they have about four slicer programs that they recognize. Ultimate Cura to me is like the most popular out there anyways, and that works with this. There is some other slicer programs out there that this will work with, but there's only, like I said, like about four. Uh, the only other problem I had was with downloading for the computer end of it. Uh, it didn't show whether it was just PC or Apple. I couldn't get that information, so I still don't even know. Yeah, it was, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a shock. They sent this over to me, and I promised that I would show it, and was kind of excited about the idea, and I was uh, very excited about the idea. I wanted to use the tarantula, so I was very disappointed I can't, you know, but... We could do a time lapse thing on the um, the Hornet. Now that would take a uh, number of hours, 
again, I hate to be, you know, nickel and diming on it, but this is only worth $69.99. I am not going to dedicate a couple of days of 3D printing for a show for $69.99. It's just not going to happen, you know. So, yeah, the economics alone just said no. So we have to mix this in with other things. So we decided uh, we would mix this. And I would have had it on yesterday, of course, if, you know, certain elements of things didn't happen over the weekend and took up my, <coughs> it took my Monday away from me. But, but it's Tuesday and we're trying to get all this done. So this is, uh, it'll, you know, it's a lot cheaper than a Raspberry Pi and look at the features, you know, it is, it is quite actually a really cool product. Also this base for, you know, can be nailed down, but it also allows you to set this 360 degrees and also you have this effect as well with it so you know totally mountable to up here or something to do a shot over top of your 3d print something like that if that's what you're into but the greatest thing is if you're away from home you can just open your open up your app on your phone take a look and see how your 3d printer is doing and making sure everything is okay also the camera can kind of monitor the 3d printer for you and maybe even let you know if something you know you'll find out that quickly that something is wrong or something is going wrong and say, oh, okay, let's, let's stop it, shut it down. And it also allows you from your phone to control certain things on the 3D printer, which is like, again, you know, cool. <laughs> Remote control for the 3D printer. So for the little camera that it is and as small as it is, and it may look a little bit toyish, which it does, <laughs> I, I give you that, you know, but it's pretty, quite powerful, you know, and it will do quite a, quite a few things. And I see there's some kind of a, looks like a power button at the top of here, but I'm not sure what, oh, okay, that must be for the IRR or something. Don't know. Yeah, didn't see that in the instructions there, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Oh, thank you so much today for tuning in on Coffee and Tools. <laughs> Thursday, hopefully, we'll get back to a more of a, I don't know what kind of a schedule. We're going to have a really messed up weekend. It is the nature of the beast this week. And uh, hopefully next week, we'll get back to more normal stuff. I have two uh lasers in right now uh the second one i believe i said no don't send that here yeah they they sent it it's it's here so we'll well you know what we'll take a look at it it's huge it's it's the biggest one that's ever been in here as far as the open air type laser the other one i'm pretty happy with because it's a company that i've already dealt with and i like their product so we'll be you know we'll take a look you know i'm like i don't know might be good also got a, uh, a prototype 3D printer coming in, a new one. Yeah, it's kind of exciting to see that one. And I'd like to get back to that Harbor Freight. I have a Harbor Freight tool here that I want to show, and we have not been able to tackle it. And I never seem to be able to get the time in. I think we're going to work on that in the next few weeks and see if we can't get that Harbor Freight tool out. Take a look at it, assemble it, and do some review work on it. And take a, you know, just, it'll be cool. But <laughs> meantime, thanks for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe. Ring the notice bell if you wanna get in on these contests of giveaways and things. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Edward in Pinion, Tennessee. I don't have that size of t-shirt, man. That's a big man we got up there. So um, I'm probably gonna just send you a coffee cup, I guess, cause I don't have a t-shirt that's that size. <sighs> that's the only thing I can come up with. Uh, we don't make a shirt that size. He's he's big guy, you know, big guy. So, anyways, I'm out of here. Overhead. Oh, <laughs>